Today we're going to be going over August numbers and comparing it to 2022 just to get an idea of what the market's been like um, from this year compared to last year. And then we actually pulled some data for 2021 as well. A lot of people have a different idea of how the market's shaping up. Uh, I think there is even some um, belief that the market hasn't shifted, and we're going to get into that, which the numbers won't quite show, but uh, we will have that conversation towards the end of this uh, market update. So to start things off, we're going to go over last month's data. There was 1,392 units sold for the month of August in 2023. The average price point was $258,703, and the average cumulative days on market was 53. Now, when we compare that to last year, you'll see that there was about 300 less houses sold last month compared to last month of 2022. Uh, there was 1,680 units sold but the average price point then was 242,924, uh, with the average cumulative days on market being around 62. When we take a look at 2021, which was probably the hottest year as far as just all out frenzy, multiple offers, you had a bid, give up your firstborn, you had to do all sorts of stuff just to have a shot of getting into home ownership in 2021. In that year of August, we had 1,665 units sold. The average price point was $222,894. The cumulative days on market back then was 57. So when we look at those three tidbits uh, of info there, the thing that I notice is that August of 2023 and looking at 2021, that those numbers are pretty similar, but the average price point has continued to go up. Uh, some other points of data that I pulled was that if we look at August of 20, or August of this year and compare it to last year, prices inched up 6.49%. When we compare it to 2021, so it's gonna include 2022's price increases uh, as well, uh, there's been a 16% increase in pricing in the last two years. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to silence my hey, stupid hey, watch. Katie's, Katie's <laughs> Alarms are going off. Hopefully it's real estate related. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's look at some other data as well. If you look at 2021, the average interest rate for a mortgage, a conventional mortgage, was 2.96% compared to what it is today which is it's right around at 8%. And then if you look at last year's, the average was 5.34%. The reason why that shows an average of 5.34 though, is you still had three, three and a half, four percent 4% in the first part of last year. And then rates went up to about eight and haven't really dipped below, I think seven, maybe six and a half, uh, once we did experience those rate jumps. Um, and then one thing I was also interested in and, and found when we were compiling some data here is that the average interest rate from 1971 to today was 7.74%. Yeah. So we're right about a multi-decade average mortgage rate. And the reason why I want to bring that up is the conversations that we're hearing now is I'm going to stay out of the market because I'm waiting for interest rates to normalize and I'm also waiting for home values to go down. Well, one thing that should have brought values down is the increased interest rate, right? We've doubled the interest rate, but yet we've got a 16% increase in property values. So... Oh, I do think those are gonna inch down though. I mean, I'm seeing price reductions. That... Well, we'll get into that. Yeah. But so far this year, mm -hmm. You know, they're at all time it, high. Yeah, we're at all time high, uh, all time highs for value and uh, interest rate. But again, with the interest rate, again, what's normal right now, people are used to the twos and the threes, but that has not been historical. Like that is not what Which is why rates. I pulled that data point. Yeah. So if the if we're close to the average now, mm -hmm. what 
leads anyone to believe we're going back down to 3%, let alone a 5 or a 4%. Mm -hmm. um, and if we do, there's some type of calamity that's happening. In mm -hmm. other words, um, a major recession, which is basically job loss. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's a good idea to wait to lose your job to then buy a house, right? Uh, hopefully that wouldn't be the case for a lot of people who end up buying houses, but this notion that you're gonna wait for property values to plummet just so that you can buy, it's not really sound. I didn't pull the data again today, but I have in the past um, making TikTok videos. I wanna say during the Great Recession, which is the result of a major housing market crisis, right? Mm -hmm. That drop was like 18%. So imagine we go back down to 4% for whatever reason, a major recession were to kick in. And we match that. So you're almost back to 2021 values, which everyone sitting on the sidelines then was saying, well, I'm not gonna buy a house because I'm waiting for values to come down. Yeah, they did. Well, values have gone up so much. It skyrocketed. That, yeah, now you can't, you're not gonna get to 3%. And property values aren't going to go back to 2016. I don't know where this idea is. Eventually, they'll go back to 2016. Inflation's a real thing. Well, I can talk about <laughs> why. I can talk about my own personal house. I bought it with you <laughs> in 2018, and I paid what 84. Top notch agent, yeah. 84,000, and then I sold it in June of this year for like 170. Yeah. So even if property values went down, say 30 percent, you're looking at 30 something grand lopped off your value. So you're still at 140. It's still almost double of what you bought it for. Mm -hmm. And I bought it in 2018. So yeah. I mean, I was gonna jump on that, I mean. <laughs> so the values just aren't coming down. I, people need to get realistic about property values, um, which does kind of segue into what we've been talking about kind of all week, mm -hmm. which is, you know, we're fortunate enough, we have a lot of listings. We don't really ever have a time when we don't have multiple listings on the market. Uh, I wanna say the last 30 days is the first time where we've had multiple active listings. Mm -hmm. So, August, I, I would think, is typically a slower month throughout the year. Um, families are getting back to school, and people shift, you know, out of the, the housing market and kind of paying attention to family, getting school stuff going. And there's just that little bit of a slowdown. And it will start picking back up this month, mm -hmm. and it'll carry through until about Thanksgiving. Um, and they stop for the holidays. Right. But with that being said, even during the holidays last year, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, we didn't have multiple listings active. Um, so the pricing strategy we have been going with for the last several years is, hey, here are the comparables. Um, we can list this property at 200,000, so we're gonna set the price at 220 or 225. We always stretch mm -hmm. just to see if we could get it. Mm -hmm. And we more than likely did. And then on top of that, we would have bidding wars that would push it up even more. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. we're saying, hey, the market value is showing two hundred thousand based on comps. Let's list at two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, one of the worst things that you could possibly do as a home seller is be ultra aggressive. List too high. List too high. Become a stale listing. Uh, there's so many tools we have in our tool belt to keep it fresh, and then eventually, you know, if you're working with a skilled enough buyer's agent when they do bring us a buyer, they're gonna say, hey, we noticed you've been on the market 30 days longer than the average. And we're writing it under list price under. So, for who knows however much, yep. you know. To get top dollar in, in this shifting market, you really gotta price accordingly. You gotta price it for what people would expect. We're getting back into counter offers, and that's something that's been kind of muted over the last couple of years. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got agents who <laughs> have been used to not doing counter offers, just accepting an offer as is, and we're seeing them come back, which tells me that, that that's clear obvious that the market has shifted. Mm -hmm. Just my two cents on that. <laughs> so it's it's gonna be interesting. I'm curious to know what you know next spring's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna be a little bit slower than it has been? Because what the last two, maybe three years, the spring market, we generally consider what the end of March going into April as the beginning. Yeah. But it's really been starting in about February the last mm -hmm. couple of years. People getting a jump on it. Um, so I'm 
curious to know if we're going to go back to that old norm of March, April versus what, you know, the last couple of years. I, it's weird. Personally, I don't think the interest rates are going to come down anytime I soon. I don't see a reason. If the Fed's trying to combat inflation, uh, when they increase the Fed fund rate, it, it doesn't just affect mortgages, right? It's, it's like lending that. across the board. It affects uh, car loans. It affects everything, right? Uh, auto rates are tripled, just, just like mortgage rates. And so if we're still combating inflation and inflation isn't being curbed, um, why would we think it is? Yeah. Uh, now, that doesn't mean the market's not going to soften. I think we're going to reach a natural equilibrium and move into more of a neutral market. But I don't see anything short of some type of catastrophe that's going to turn into a strong you. buyer's market. Well, personally, I'm... I'm kind of glad for the shift because I feel like I've had clients who've just not been able to buy in the current market that we've been in mm -hmm. because of how aggressive it is. Yep. You know, they just don't have the budget to go up to the two, two fifty, three, or, or to go ten, twenty, thirty over asking price, or mm -hmm. they even compete. Some buyers do need settlement charges are paid for them. Um, and that's been a thing of the past, but now that's coming back and that doesn't mean that they're not a qualified buyer it just means they need a little bit of help they're still going to make it to the closing table in spite of that but did you see that uh um that creed the song or the band creed yeah i know who that is the, yeah okay did you see that tiktok i made where he's like hello friend <laughs> actually i did that's funny <laughs> so and but it was about seller paid concessions. It's like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. And I actually commented because I actually wrote an offer oh, that's with right. yeah, seller did. paid. So that yeah, that that is coming back. Um, which is good. Yeah. Um, and we need it. It needs to be healthy. There needs you know, to be availability for everybody in, in my opinion. And you know, just... I guess I'm sitting here thinking, I just mentioned that's good. Anyone watching this thinking about, you know, selling a home, yeah. obviously not good for a seller. But there's ways to negotiate. You can write it yep. in. Um mm -hmm. There's just things we can do to get it. Well, it, one of the arguments it. I just got so sick of the last couple of years is us as agents liked the market we were in. Hmm. People think we only represent sellers. We represent buyers. I'm glad that we can get our buyers who have limited resources. Mm -hmm. In other words, not enough down payment plus closing costs to compete are now going to be able to come back into the market mm -hmm. and purchase homes and get some assistance from a seller. And you're right. You know, as a listing agent, we'll be countering for the difference mm -hmm. in the closing yes. cost uh, to offset it. So it's a net zero to the seller, but then the buyer will still get what they want. Yeah, I um, personally, we represent both sellers and buyers. So mm -hmm. whoever my client is at the time, obviously, I want my sellers to do well and I'm going to negotiate like a mother <laughs> on their behalf when it comes into things. But that's the only offer we have on the table, you know. Definitely, you got to negotiate with it. Um, or, you know, you can sit a little bit longer, and then what's the worst that happens? Somebody comes in and gives you a low offer because you sat, when really you would have made more yep. profit if you would have even just considered some seller paids. Mm -hmm. But for my buyer clients, my goal is to get them a house. They want to move. They want to, you know, put them, they want the American dream just like everybody else. And some people need a little help. And that's just the truth of the matter. Yep. Uh, man, that you have to edit out the F word. <laughs> uh, I said duck. No, you didn't. Yes, I, yeah, I did. It just was muffled a little bit. <clears throat> I don't. I was going to say something, and then I forgot. I don't know what I was going to say. I can't help you there. It was incredibly important. It was going to be the most important thing I was going to say for the day. You think everything <laughs> that I say is important. Yes. It's extremely important at all times. I'm just glad that the market has shifted. I, I really am. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, it does it stink that we're seeing listings sit a little bit longer. Yes. However, I think that it needs to be more healthy. I don't think it was healthy to list a property and every listing that goes up is pending within one, two days. And mm -hmm. it's a Crap. bloodbath. I mean, I mean you're really fighting. a few hours in some instances. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would go to a showing, a scheduled showing for the evening and it listed in the morning and before my showing, my appointment would be canceled. Yeah. My clients worked in the day. They could not get off sooner. Like, that stinks. <laughs> that stinks. <laughs> it is. It does. Um, 
Man, I, I cannot rack my brain to think of what I wanted to Not mention. meant to be. Let it go. That's right. Just like, let it go. <laughs> Is that frozen? Yes, good job. Wow. It's a good movie. It's a good movie, <laughs> yes. Oh, that's the... So here's the weird thing, though. I don't anticipate more inventory. Hmm. So I think options are still going to be relatively... I don't know if bleak's the sparse. right word. But sparse, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you don't find... What you like you're going to be sifting through some old stuff and mm -hmm. it's going to be the junk nobody wants uh, <laughs> uh, but uh more like the investment nice way to put it <laughs> <laughs> well, your house is the junk no one wants uh, hey if you're sitting on the market for three times longer than any other house it's there's one a of problem two things. Too maybe high. it's still a good house but it's overpriced mm -hmm. or it's a junk house and it's still overpriced yeah because junk sells at the right price yeah everything sells at the right price right <laughs> well i guess this will wrap up our little market update for august unless there was anything else you wanted to add no nope. but i can't even remember what i want to say so i don't want to talk anymore all right just make a tiktok later <laughs> yeah i'll think about it and make a tiktok all righty and this has been the miami valley experience with jonas Hubbard, katie masters at street light realty i yep. guess we need to include that <laughs>